the resources used to create the following essay were Large Language Models and the Reverse Turing Test paper by Terence J. Sichanowski, Ilya Sutskeva and Andre Kapathy's Conversations with Lex Friedman, a video by Art of the Problem, ChatGPT, 30 Year History, How AI Learned to Talk, two recent videos by Three Blue One Brown about Transformers and GBTs, Anthropic's most recent paper, Mapping the Mind of a Large Language Model, and Michael Levin's recent YouTube videos and past conversations with Lex. So the AI Emergence Debate. The following story is taken directly from Terence J. Sanjowski's Large Language Models and the Reverse Turing Test Paper. One of my favorite stories is about a chance encounter on the back roads of rural America when a curious driver came upon a sign, Talking Dog for Sale. The owner took him to the backyard and left him with an old border collie. The dog looked up and said, Woof woof. Hi, I'm Carl. Pleased to meet you. The driver was stunned. Where did you learn how to talk? Language school, said Carl. I was in a top secret language program with the CIA. They taught me three languages. That's incredible, said the driver. What's your job with the CIA? I was a field operative and the CIA flew me around the world. I sat in a corner and eavesdropped on conversations between foreign agents and diplomats who never suspected I could understand what they were saying and reported back to the CIA what I overheard. You're a spy for the CIA, said the driver, increasingly astonished. When I retired, I received the Distinguished Intelligence Cross, the highest honor awarded by the CIA, and honorary citizenship for extraordinary services rendered to my country. The driver was a little shaken by this encounter, and asked the owner how much he wanted for the dog. You can have the dog for 10 bucks. I can't believe you're asking so little for such an amazing dog. Did you really believe all that bullshit about the CIA? Carl never left the farm. AI learns to talk like a human. In 2020, OpenAI's GPT-3 took the world by storm. How did this happen? From a data, processing and computing perspective, the model was way larger in scale than previous versions. But this was just the technology that enabled the real innovation and reason for such widespread attention. It was unprecedented humanness. It could now convincingly simulate and engage in human conversation. I distinctly remember sitting in a cafe and having a deeply personal conversation with GPT-3 about life, death, and all the existential fears between. A conversation that up until that point was only possible with another biological human meat sack. Since the launch of, since the launch of GPT-3 and many more powerful and impressive models, an absolute goat rodeo of debate contesting the nature of this new intelligence has emerged. Researchers and founders from fledging companies, the AI and machine learning OGs, philosophers, linguists, biologists and experts from every other imaginable field have weighed in on the debate. Here are some of the questions you'll hear thrown about. Are the abilities of large language models emergent? Can the current models reason? Are the signs of intelligence genuine or a mirage? Do current models really understand human language? Do they understand meaning and what they are saying? Do current LLMs exhibit genuine intelligence comparable to humans? Can AI systems generalize beyond their training data? Is AI sentient and suffering? Here are some of the interesting papers and discussions contesting the debate. The debate over understanding in AI's LLMs by Melanie Mitchell, our emergent abilities of large language models and mirage, by Rylan Schaefer, Predictability and Surprise in Large Generative Models by Jason Way, and here's another piece from just yesterday by Dr. Fei Li, featured in Time. I hope I pronounced those names correctly. Apologies if I didn't. So the emergence debate. The emergence debate can be confusing, at least it was for me. Some of the research examines specifically whether emergent abilities are or are not predictable as the model scales up in size. Other research examines whether the models display emergent characteristics at all. And judging by some of the comments and related Reddit posts, 
Some people have accidentally conflated the two. Regardless, the reality is that these questions are really, really hard to answer. Because one, words like emergence and intelligence, or understand and reason, are slippery. They're slippery words we apply to complex phenomena that we really just don't understand. And because two, these complex phenomena can often, often can't and shouldn't be applied to complex things as if they were binary categories. For this, I think evolutionary biologist Michael Levin is best fit to articulate. This, and I'm sort of this way about everything. I, I don't like binary categories about almost anything. I like a continuum. And the thing about the human brain is that it, by, by, by accepting that as, as some kind of an important category or essential, um, essential thing, we end up with all kinds of weird pseudo problems and conundrums. So for example, uh, when we talk about it, you know, if you do want to talk about um, uh, uh, ethics and other th other things like that, uh, and and what you know, this this idea that surely if we look out into the universe, surely we don't believe that this human brain is the only way to be sentient, right? Surely we don't, you know, and to have high level cognition. I just can't, I can't even wrap my mind around this this idea that that is the only way to do it. No doubt there are other architectures made on made of completely different principles that achieve the same thing. And once we believe that, then that tells us something important. It tells us that things that are not quite human brains or chimeras of human brains and other tissue or human brains or other kinds of brains and novel configurations or things that are sort of brains but not really or plants or, or embryos or whatever might also have important cognitive status. So that's the only thing. I think we have to be really careful about treating the human brain as if it was some kind of like sharp um, binary category, you know, you are or you aren't. I, I don't believe that exists. So, In an ant colony, each ant follows simple rules like following trails, smells and avoiding obstacles. Together, these simple actions lead to complex behaviors like finding food efficiently and building nests. In bird flocks, each bird follows basic rules of alignment, separation and cohesion which leads to the emergence of intricate and coordinated flight patterns without any central control. Minor temperature changes in water can lead to drastic change from liquid to solid. Individual buying and selling of goods and services creates complex economic cycles. Cellular automata and Conway's game of life shows emergence and complexity in the most simple computational systems. And this type of emergent behavior seems to carry right through to neural networks and machine learning. Oh, the dreaded laundry. When I asked the most recent version of ChatGBT to write me a humorous poem about a mundane task, like doing the laundry, this is the result. I'll just read the first, the first para. Oh, the laundry pile grows so tall, like Everest in the laundry hall, socks and shirts in tangled mess, creating chaos, I must confess. The creation of this poem demonstrates ability beyond simple creativity, rhyme and poetic structure. It mightn't be immediately apparent, but the fact an artificial intelligence can almost instantly create a poem demonstrating a deep understanding of human, satire, emotion, irony, and the human struggle is fucking unbelievable. Does the ability to create a coherent and emotionally resonant poem arise naturally as the model synthesizes information and forms its own understanding of human qualities? Or is the apparent human-like creativity just an impressive mirage? produced through vast exposure to huge amounts of text and relevant references. If you met a talking dog capable of telling you a captivating story about being a spy in the CIA, which question are you most likely to be asking first? Was this dog really in the CIA? Or how the fuck did this dog learn to speak? Deciphering whether the ability to compose the laundry poem was truly emergent or explainably designed is important. It's going to help guide how these models are trained and improved moving forward and, more importantly in the short term, it'll inform the AI safety debate. If behaviours demonstrated by new models are unpredictable, there are some obvious concerns. For what it's worth, my guess is that the answer is probably somewhere in between the two. Somewhere on the diverse, non-linear spectrum between natural emergence and intelligent design. And rather than deciding a clear winner, we're likely going to need to revisit our understanding of some of these binary categories like intelligence and emergence. All of this is far less important than the fact that an artificial intelligence can write a deeply human poem. 
the fact that we are having these debates at all is so bizarre. So, what is happening? Here's another quote from Szyzhanowski's reverse Turing test paper. Something is beginning to happen that was not expected even a few years ago. A threshold was reached, as if a space alien had suddenly appeared that could communicate with us in an eerily human way. Only one thing is clear, LLMs are not human, but they are superhuman in their ability to extract information from the world's database of text. Some aspects of their behavior appear to be intelligent, but it's not human intelligence. What is the nature of their intelligence? This idea that a neural network can learn meaning and context behind words is not a new one. Neurons ...and trained it on language. At first he used 200 short sentences he created. Interestingly, he didn't provide any word boundaries. He just simply applied a stream of letters to the network 10 times and at each step trained it to get closer at making the correct prediction of the next letter. The first interesting thing he noticed was that the network learned word boundaries on its own. He shows this in a plot where at the onset of a new word, the chance of error or uncertainty is high, and as more of the word is received, the error rate declines, since the sequence is increasingly predictable. At the end of the word, the error would jump back up again, but not as high as before. This reflects what we saw in information theory, where an intelligent signal contain decreasing entropy over sequence length. He then notes that it's worth looking into whether the network has any understanding of the meaning behind these words. He probed the internal neurons in the context unit as it was processing words, and then he plotted them and compared the spatial arrangement. What he found was the network would spatially cluster words based on meaning. For example, it separated nouns, which are inanimate and animate, and within these groups, he saw subcategorization. Animate objects were broken down into human and non-human clusters. Inanimate objects were broken down into breakable and edible clusters. And so he emphasizes that the network was learning these hierarchical interpretations. But Elman notes that according to Noam Chomsky, this shouldn't be possible. How could a little network understand the words? Even the most recent research unpacking current transformer architecture shows that the goal of a transformer is literally to enable the progressive improvement of mapping of context and meaning between words. In the case of transformers, you really want to think of the vectors in this embedding space as not merely representing individual words. For one thing, they also encode information about the position of that word, which we'll talk about later. But more importantly, you should think of them as having the capacity to soak in context. We'll save the nitty-gritty details of current LLMs and transformer architecture for a future essay. But, in very simple terms, current models like GPT predict the next word in a sentence by applying a mathematical probability to every possible next word. When words and sentences are fed into the machine, they are broken into tokens. Words, numbers, symbols. Each token is associated with an adjustable vector which you can think of as coordinates in some very high dimensional space. We humans operate in limited three dimensional space, so imagine a vast multi dimensional map of many parallel universes. Let's say you ask ChatGPT, tell me a funny story about a talking banana who wants to be a rock star but takes too many drugs, gets way cooked, and dies while performing at a festival. The model breaks down the request into tokens tell me a funny story about talking banana etc these tokens are mapped to that higher dimensional vector space and the vectors which are coordinates share information back and forth through billions of neuron like adjustable connections established during training this process allows the model to learn intricate details capturing both contextual and semantic meaning between words the pre-training process, combined with the new coordinates in the vector space, allow the model to not only understand sentence structure, syntax, and grammar, but somehow also moral lessons, absurdity, and goal orientation. Talking and banana are grouped together to form a humorous protagonist in a story involving moral lessons, absurdity, goal orientation, and the tragic cautionary tale of rock stars on the bender. Once there was a talking banana named Barry who dreamed of being a rock star. Barry strummed his peel guitar and sang fruity tunes. Fame got to his head and he started taking too many drugs. 
One day, Barry was so high, he thought he could fly. He tried to stage dive at a concert, but ended up slipping on his own peel. This was from ChatGPT. So we've glossed over 99% of the technical details here, but you get the gist. There isn't some pre-programmed instruction manual on how the model should produce an output, and it's not simply regurgitating information from training. There's a very flexible structure with billions of adjustable parameters, allowing the model to basically teach itself how to come up with an accurate response. Expanding our understanding of intelligence and the field of interpretability. In the last section, I used the word understand, though rather hesitantly. We could replace understand with compute, but I don't think it really matters all that much at this point. Does the model truly understand? Are the behaviors emergent? Are they intelligent? Well, probably not in a way that is identical to a human, but it's certainly doing some form of understanding, displaying emergent behaviors and demonstrating intelligence, in many cases better than a human. And increasingly, it's seeming more and more likely that these models will be able to generalize across multiple fields. Whether or not these models will achieve a human level general intelligence without direct contact with the biological world is an interesting question. What do you think it takes to, let's talk about AGI a little bit. What, what do you think it takes to build a system of human level intelligence? We talked about reasoning, we talked about long-term memory, but in general, what does it take, you think? Well, I can't be sure, but I think the deep learning plus maybe another small idea. We don't fully understand how we make sense of the world how complex behaviors emerge from simple biological systems, or how intelligence works. All of which leaves us with the more important and profound questions like, what is intelligence? What is emergence? And what can we learn about ourselves through studying these systems? There's a ton of interesting research happening. On Wednesday, Anthropic dropped their most recent work, mapping the mind of a large language model. The research reveals how millions of human-like concepts can be mapped as patterns in the neural networks of large language models. I'll unpack the report in another essay. For the meantime, I'll go on record stating I believe that by unraveling the inner workings of artificial intelligence, we'll uncover some incredible and confronting truths about the true nature of intelligence.